Uh, our last topic for, or for uh, kinetics is catalysis. Right. And catalysis is really the study or use and application of catalysts. Didn't see that coming, did you? Okay. So, what is a catalyst? You probably know what a catalyst is. What's a catalyst? What's that? Speeds up a reaction. So, yeah, a catalyst is a substance. that speeds up the rate of a reaction. And then sort of uh, parenthetically, you can often see it without, that's W slash O, that's my without, Okay, I think we went over this in Gen Com 1, but I gotta go over my symbols again in Gen Com 2. Okay, without being consumed. <coughs> because, you know, reactants, they can speed up a reaction. Okay, if you throw more reactant molecules in there, if it's first or second order, that's gonna increase the rate. Okay, but that's not really a catalyst. Okay, a catalyst is something not involved in the reaction that somehow increases the rate, um, and it's not involved in the reaction, so it's not going to be consumed. Okay. All right, so now you're probably wondering, I know, I know you guys already, you're wondering, okay, how does it speed up a reaction? How does it increase the rate? Well, let me tell you. Uh, catalysts increase the rate of reactions by lowering the activation energy. So you can see how what a catalyst does uh, for this potential energy diagram for, well, so the blue one, that's the uh, uncatalyzed, so this is without the catalyst, okay? So the blue one, well, I mean, both of them but just look at the blue now, right? Is that an exothermic or endothermic reaction? Exothermic. It's exothermic, right? Is that what the first word is, exothermic? Mm -hmm. All right, so something like this, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, exothermic, the reactions are going down, potential energy, okay? Um, so we know where the activation energy is, right? It's the difference between the reactants and uh, the highest potential energy of the uh, function. So essentially, it's doo -doo -doo -doo. for the blue one, we draw a dotted line here, the activation energy is this much? Right. So with the red line, what they're doing is they're lowering the activation energy. And if you see a good uh, potential energy diagram, you don't always see them this good, but um, it always introduces a second step. And so you always see two activation energies, one for both steps. Okay, because now the reactant molecules, whatever, somehow, some way, have to interact with the catalyst. Okay, so that's a new step when they interact with the catalyst. So we're always going to see a second step. Okay, but what that does, it effectively, either one you look at it, it lowers the activation energy. So here's the activation energy for that first step, and here it is for that second step. Both are much 
lower than the original activation energy that was uncatalyzed, right, without the catalyst. Okay. So the catalyst lowers the activation energy of a reaction. So why does that increase the rate? More molecules have enough energy to react. Good. Okay. So if we look at a thermal energy distribution, one of our other graphs that is very uh, useful to think about uh, kinetic energy and, or excuse me, uh, think about kinetics. Okay. So you'll remember this. We had a percentage of molecules uh, and their kinetic energy distribution. Okay. At some temperature, it looks something like this. Remember that? Okay. And so let's say this, let's say this is my activation energy without the catalyst. Okay, so now all of these molecules have enough kinetic energy. All the molecules underneath that line. All right? So let's say that's, I don't know, 5%. I've got to be careful with that yellow. It's kind of hot. So it's kind of bright. got to use it judiciously. It can't be just yellow all over the screen to put on shades. Okay? So we had a catalyst to this reaction, and that lowers the activation. So maybe it's down here, okay? So that's my activation energy with the catalyst. So now, all of these molecules have enough kinetic energy, plus those 5%. So now, maybe, I don't know, 10% of the molecules have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. The more molecules have enough kinetic energy, have enough kinetic energy the more molecules are going to react. The more molecules react, we said that's going to happen faster, right? All right, so catalysts are substances that speed up chemical reactions. They speed up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy. And now, I know you guys, I know what you're thinking next. Well, how do they lower the activation energy, right? That's what you're thinking. Well, tell me more. I'm interested in the catalyst, okay? Well, it turns out, well, let's think about what that activation energy was again. Why does every reaction have a Activation energy. What was so special about these tippy top positions? Either one, with or without the catalyst. Why was there a position way up here? That's the, the Where the, the transition state that was the most unstable. So if we lower the energy of that, what are we doing? We're making it more stable. And that's what catalysts do. They stabilize those unstable transition states, okay? So catalysts lower activation energies by stabilizing High potential energy transition states. too much fun out there. They need to get to class. They need to stop having fun. Go to chemistry class. Stop having fun. 
All right, so I know you now. Okay, so catalyst, lower the activation energy by stabilizing the high potential energy transition phase. And I think, well, how do they stabilize the high potential energy transition states? Okay, well, it turns out that would be different for every catalyst for every reaction, okay? Every catalyst is going to stabilize, has a different mechanism for stabilizing the reactor molecules in that specific reaction, okay? So what we're going to do is we'll just go over two examples uh, that your book covers that are important and sort of uh, useful and have real-world applications uh, and show you what they mean by stabilizing reaction uh, high potential energy transition states, okay? Uh, to do that, though, <coughs> we're going to talk about two different types of cat catalysis. catalysis, okay? I guess before we do that. Actually, I'm not going to lie. I thought we were going to do that right now, and then I forgot about this slide. So I'm like, oh, probably should define these because this is the next slide. That's how you do it. Okay. So what is a homogeneous catalysis and heterogeneous catalysis? So it has to do about the phases. Okay. So for homogeneous catalysis, okay, the catalyst and reactant molecules are in the same phase. Okay, so maybe they're all in the gas phase. The catalyst is a gas phase molecule. The reactants are gas phase molecules. Okay. And then the heterogeneous catalysis is when the catalyst and reactant molecules are in different phases. Okay, so maybe the solid, uh, so the, maybe the catalyst is in the solid phase, all right, and the reactant molecules are in the gas phase. Whereas with the homogeneous catalysis, everybody's in the gas phase. <laughs> so the ones we're going to talk about, I think a little bit more uh, common are heterogeneous catalysis. Well, they're in different phases. Uh, but uh, one really good example of homogeneous catalysis, I don't know, I don't know why I should say really good, but a, an interesting case of heterogeneous catalysis was a big problem when I was growing up. Okay? When I was in school, uh, you know, um, we, we were learning about ozone depletion. Okay? That was like a big problem in like the 80s. Okay? 90s, early 90s, okay? We're all going to die, all right? That's how bad it was. We're all going to die. Ozone's, ozone's gone, we're done, okay? And the reason why ozone was being depleted was we used to uh, use uh, chlorofluorocarbons. We still use them, but chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, were used as propellants in, like, aerosol sprays, like hairspray, room, or deodorizers, air fresheners, that kind of stuff, okay? It's also used as refrigerants for, like, air conditionings and like refrigerators, but that's in a closed system, so that's not escaping, so that's okay. We still use that there, but we don't use them as aerosols anymore because the CFCs would go up, float up in the atmosphere, and ozone's O3 molecule, it's good for us because it uh, absorbs UV light, okay, from the sun, uh, but the CFCs were going up there and catalyzing the decomposition of ozone, all right? So ozone is being depleted, and we're all going to die. Uh, but then we start regulating ozone, or, or regulating, or we, we regulate ozone too, but regulate uh, CFCs and ozone's coming back. I think it's all back. I think we got it all back. I don't know. I think pretty much it's all back. So we're, we're not going to die from that. <laughs> we're going to die from other things. Okay? 